producer spotlight with Mr. Instro. You can be a beat maker and not be a music producer. But when you're a music producer, you don't have to be a beat maker. Only on the element. Wow, it's just gone 22 minutes before we hit 7 o'clock. It is the producer spotlight. It is the element where everything's rocking real and relevant. At all for the love of hip hop. It's a full house tonight. That's why you're hearing cackles in the background and a lot of shenanigans going on. And Mr. Instro is here. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Yeah. (laughs) That's got tone. That's What's a popping? beautiful. That's a beautiful melody. Oh, we, we should, we should keep that one. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> How you Love doing? It. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm excited. Um, it's a beautiful evening. Beautiful yeah. cold evening. Ah, oh, it's not so bad. Uh, me, I'm cold, man. I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to stay cold. What's up, Sarah? Huh? What's up, Sarah? Haul. Yeah, also me. Ah, oh, like, yeah, also I can't, me. I, I, I really can't deal with uh, being called. Uh, so, all right. Uh, so, hello, hello, to Mr. Instagram. I'm kidding. I'm not going to do nah, that. Nah, 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 nah. I am off the. What uh-huh. is it? Off the what? Off the grid. I am off the grid, yo. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure trying to see going. nobody. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use my electric blanket. Thank you very much. <laughs> you. I'm, I'm happy shut with that. it. Down yeah, no. before we even got very very far, Mr. Instro. Mm-hmm. I'm happy you're here. Um, you have been behaving over the past couple of weeks, so I yes. decided to, you know, keep to tradition because you were saying you're like it's it's terrible when we don't keep to tradition that we don't have a good night. I appreciate so that so much. We are gonna have a good night. Mm-hmm. Who are we spotlighting tonight? Yo, I'm gonna need you to do that intro. <laughs> <laughs> because you know like it's because like i don't want to introduce him just as like anybody like, right like i'm freestyling or anything because like he he genuinely is like a, a legend in the game he's very well respected mm-hmm. and i found out some things that really make him even more legendary that i can't wait to share with you guys all right so it's just gone 90 minutes before we hit seven o'clock it is the producer's spotlight with myself the pristine queen as well as mr instro i am the student he is the professor and we're going to find out what we need to know about this particular person so i like to start with the engine numbers so the engine number is ernest dion wilson Mm. and uh, for those in the know they're probably like oh yeah for those not in the know popularly and publicly known as no id and his roots run through 20 plus years of hip-hop now some of the notable things to know about no id he created the foundation of modern chicago rap with his mm-hmm. childhood friend someone you might know common sense maybe yep. yep and then he helped mentor a teenage kanye west at the insistence of his mother mm-hmm. and then he would go on to produce for bow wow g unit jay-z nas mm. drake and Rihanna, just to name a, a few. few and that's like just hip-hop He's done so right. many other genres. Right. So there's a lot that we need to know about No ID. Also, shout out to Complex. This is where I'm getting this really nice and put together bio. So some of the things that we also need to know outside of what he can actually create is the fact that uh, he was at the forefront of the music industry as a former president of Kanye's Good Music Imprint, mm-hmm. stints as the executive vice president of a and and executive vice president and head of creative at Def Jam Recordings, as well as executive to VP of Capital Music Group. Yes. Beautiful. No idea. Beautiful intro. <laughs> That's the guy, man. Um, I think as far as legendary hip-hop music producers go, I think No ID is way, way up there. But I have to mention the fact that he reminds me a lot of myself. Okay. Ooh. And 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 not, not I got I gotta do it. I gotta do it. When you say things like that, I just yeah! He, does. <laughs> he really does talk he that talk me, he, he reminds me of myself because uh he's uh he's got this very chilled out like he's not like all over the place mm-hmm. you know very introverted well he comes out as someone who's introverted but because of what he does i think he kind of steps out of his shell and um the other thing that i realized about him is his ability to you know to express himself um you know that's why he was a 
the uh, good music uh, president, you know, mm-hmm. because he's a smart guy. Right. And um, I'm a smart guy too. So. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> if I do say so myself. But if mo- I do say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the most important thing that I say kind of like makes me admire him so much is his introduction to music yes started with house music right house music is what they had at the time you know that's what he was exposed to just in terms of music in chicago mm-hmm. right uh, this hip hop thing came much much later in hi- in his um in his career so he was already making you know house edits you know he was already on the boards uh, working on some house music but um, you know um, he says that Common was his biggest influence wow. when it comes to being introduced to hip hop like right. wh- what is this thing okay hip hop and obviously when you start grabbing the concept of what hip hop is you start to fall in love with it like almost immediately That's so true. that was his journey I, I also come from a very uh, different background in terms of my music yeah um, I started off you know being very passionate about uh, you know R&B you know music that that was very soulful mm-hmm. uh, gospel music um, you know anything that leaned towards you know crazy chords you know um, intense minor chords mm-hmm. and and it it really made it interesting for me to to move from uh house music i mean not house music but that genre like gospel and all of those yeah into falling in love with hip-hop which is a beautiful uh i guess transition for me also because hip-hop is a sample based genre Mm -hmm. right when we're talking about hip-hop music we're talking about samples so it it was always dope to go back and go yo i knew this song from those days right and now they did you know a hip-hop version of that so it would be interesting just from an, uh, a historical perspective to say yo i this is what we're doing and it sounds really really fresh we're remaking this thing but we're bringing in break beats and we're making it sound much much fresher and it 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 becomes the sound of the times right yeah so that's for me that's that's pretty much the crux of why i say he reminds me of me because his music history his music background started off with a different genre right and somehow he found himself being um uh, having accolades you know of this other genre right. that he didn't begin with so i find that so so amazing and um it just proves the point i've been making even with previous episodes of producer spotlight previous episodes i've been saying yo don't be scared to experiment yeah go through these different um uh, genres and see what you like from that and maybe you can merge that with whatever you're producing as hip-hop because that's what that's about you know it's it's about just making making everything a mishmash mishmash and some magic hopefully happens so mr instro there's this idea and concept sometimes with people um where if your roots don't come from a particular place yes it's almost like do you it's almost as though like if you say okay my my background is this my background is that and yeah. the answer is not my background is hip-hop sometimes people look at people and go so do you really have the weight mm. to be in this and to be taken super 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 seriously yeah um i can even make the argument of you know even as hip-hop commentators you have to have a background that people can understand mm. and go okay so this is why you qualify to be having these to be in these spaces and to say these kinds of things yeah is it the same then with production and even djing because even here at home a lot of hip-hop djs learned how to dj with a different genre with house yeah. for instance yeah. or something else yeah. but they are still incredible hip-hop djs yeah so having roots in something different does that take anything away 
The answer I would say would be no. Um, music is like a very uh, beautiful thing because it's educational. Mm -hmm. You can never hear a song and look at the credits and not be educated about something. Mm -hmm. You know, you it, it'll it'll either be like, wow, who did this? And then you find out the producer. Okay, and the producer. Oh, turns out the producer produced another song that my my other friend likes and then you you know it becomes a ripple effect right. just like that and i believe that it doesn't matter whether you have a uh, a different background from what hip hop was what matters is what are you doing now now that you're now that you're in love with it now that it's your thing what are you doing now i'll tell you what i did as soon as i fell in love with hip hop I went back. Do mm. you understand? I, I was like, okay, so what is this thing right. they call hip hop? Yes. So that I can equip myself with what it is so that I know, right? I know without a shadow of a doubt that what I am getting into, because hip hop is more than just a genre, right? Mm -hmm. It's a subculture, mm -hmm. right? That's how you understand it. You understand it as a subculture, which means that it forms part of your everyday life yes it's not just about the music yes it's the way you express Speak yourself. on it you know what i mean like it's the way you you move it's the way you talk yes you know it's the way you do things and man you can't not be into something like that and not want to uh, figure out what the history is about 100% I agree with you but I'm going to cap you there just a little bit because yes. so we're going to take a young break to go get some money thereafter you're going to hear the sounds of Carmen with I Used to Love Her and then you're going to come back and hear myself and Mr. Instro as we continue the producer's spotlight it's just gone 10 to 7 right here on The Element on Massive Metro only on the element four minutes to go before we hit seven o'clock my goodness it is the producer spotlight with myself and mr instro yep. wow so much is going on in studio we just gave you common with i used to love her yeah and if you just walked in we are spotlighting no i d d yeah no id yes for anybody that doesn't know so no id is dion spelled backwards <laughs> Chill's like what huh because <laughs> <laughs> that's Dion that's his name his name is Dion so you learn something yes <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the party Chills yeah so very simple very effective very cool nickname um I want to also just discuss a bit about his DJing career right um a bit earlier on you saw me like my eyes go big and i was like what the hell right <laughs> yeah and that was because he says when you book him mm -hmm. as a dj he's gonna play house music even now even now if you book him he gonna play house music and that for me i mean i mean i mean because of the oh. pandemic we don't really know where his mind is at right to be completely honest but he's quoted saying that as a dj that's what he prefers to play so it's just crazy right it's insane <laughs> it's with absolutely all those insane. records right with all the music that he has that he's produced yes he would rather just give you a house set so it makes me wonder a number of things yo this is when i wish that we knew people like no id personally <laughs> so we can call and go brother what's popping because my mind goes all right is it um is it a thing of Yo, I don't want to be a DJ that that seems like I'm just bumping my own stuff. Mm. Y'all know that. Y'all know that thing, right? Mm. <laughs> so, because it, it can easily be that way. Like, yes. as a consumer, you can easily go, yo, you are just using this art form just as self-promotion and not necessarily as promotion of the culture yeah. and um, all its different assets and other musicians, right? Mm -hmm. So, I wonder, is it that or is it a situation of it's just what i prefer yeah yeah or maybe it's just what i'm better at yeah yeah i mean we don't we don't really know the actual reason yeah but um i know from my own experience right right that when i dj yes 
this chat. Mm -hmm. I I love. Oh, Konja, you said you've never seen me DJ before. This chat, and apparently you DJed in my presence, but <laughs> you were turned turned because that's what we do at Cool Out. Yeah, no, no doubt. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when I was DJing at Cool Out, yes. I would exclusively play Afro beats. You are so interesting. You remind me of Spoken Priestess. Shout out to my okay. girl, Spoken Priestess. Okay, shout out to Spoken Priestess. Especially because you, one would have, I remember the time when she was like, yo, I'm a DJ now. Yeah. And I think she had put out a, an Instagram post or a Twitter, uh, wow, Twitter post, a tweet, mm. Lord. And she was like, hey, I'm a DJ now. What genre do you think I'm going to DJ in? Yeah. And everybody's natural inclination was hip hop. Hip -hop because yeah. she's, she is a very key part of the culture even though she might not be active right now yes but when you look at hip-hop culture in south africa you cannot speak about some of the key people without mentioning spoken priestess of course she's knowledgeable she's made so much impact and she understands music yeah absolutely. not just hip-hop so and even her show uh on 16 UJFM, bars 60 bars reloaded, 60 bars we know reloaded. We, yeah so, so everybody was like okay it makes sense and she came out as a DJ and she was like, nah, I got some other things Afro for y'all. Yeah. And she's good at it. Yeah. So I wonder if it's a it's a situation of, I don't want to be boxed into just this one thing. Yeah. I don't want you to only know me for this one thing. I can do other things as well. Yeah. So for me, it was, mm. it was more about falling in love. Okay. I, I can't speak for anybody. I can't speak for no idea. I can't speak for spoken priestess. But for me, I never I was never interested in DJ like never like mm. because I was surrounded with such amazing DJs you mm -hmm. know P Kada yeah Reiko Akio um yo so many so many you know and I, I just wasn't interested these guys are good if I want a good DJ set I just got to hang out with one of them, go to one of their gigs. Right. Or, you, know, you know what I mean? It was easy for me. But when I heard um, uh, uh, Afrobeat mm -hmm. and, and, and its emergence and its sound, yeah. right? There was a time when Afrobeat was, was just weird. It was like <laughs> corny and like very not clean. Yeah, you know? yeah, I'll tell you, a, there was a song I heard on this other show, and the song is by Techno. Mm -hmm. uh, the song is called Bana, right? It's a very popular Bana, Afro. Bana, yes. Bana, very Bana. popular Sorry. Afro beat song. Even me, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> See? Like, it's. When I heard it, I was like, okay, this has my attention because. I can tell that this is new age programming. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not people sitting with their Casios and psh, no, 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 no. This is FL Studio. This is Pro Tools. This is something that's new, right? And I, I was, yo, I was taken away because I was, I was just like, yo, where does this song come from? How did they do this? Search for techno, and I see his affiliates. Start to listen to more music. Found myself hours and hours just listening to afrobeat and that's not to say it was a rap for hip-hop or, mm. or whatever but like it felt so new to me and for the first time ever i wanted other people to hear it like uh -huh. yo there's this new thing that's happening but please be a part of it like y'all gotta hear this thing especially if you're 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 a pan-african and you're a person that is proud of the music that's been produced in this in this in, uh, in this continent and i just i was like okay cool if i were to ever dj i think that's actually how it even started you know just hypothetically saying it saying yo akio you know if i were to ever dj right i want to do this afrobeat thing he's like yo no doubt this afrobeat thing is is gaining momentum is crazy yo you want to dj this sunday i'm like what yeah like why not and it's like oh okay cool you know i got a couple of days to prepare and yeah that was that man had a crazy 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 set at kitchener's i remember when when i started this set my sister was it was only her who was what up h you know she she was the only one watching me by the end of my set yes yeah, so the dance floor was full okay wow. that's how i knew that's how i knew that you know what there's something here 
Yes. <laughs> That's how I knew that there's something there. And um, I would say that maybe with, you know, with people like No ID, um, they were exposed to a certain kind of music, which is house. And they just loved music and they grew with it, you know. And when this hip hop thing came, it was just a natural progression. Wow. Always something new that I learn about Instru every week. <laughs> <laughs> Every single week. The other time, hey, hey, I met Nas. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, I DJ. Oh, okay. I wonder what I'm going to learn next week. We're going to get into the second hour of the show. We're going to open with Bow Wow and Amarion with Let Me Hold You. Shout out to Don Tabs. It's one of his absolute favorite songs. Undeniable. And I love it too. Only on the element nine minutes after seven o'clock, we just gave you Bow Wow and Amari Yawn with Let Me Hold You. Everybody was in their feels. Yes. Beautiful joy. It takes me back to a very long time ago, yeah. but also you can play it in 2021 and it is still just beautiful. Yeah. Production is Timeless. amazing. Timeless. Bow Wow sounds amazing. I can see the music video in my mind. Shout out to No ID, man. Mm, shout out to No ID. Crazy. And, and, and and this guy, like, it's crazy that we play this song now because yeah. um, I didn't even put it on the notes. But uh, this guy uh, had an issue, right? First of all, I want to <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you. I want to thank No ID. Okay, I want to thank him for sort of like things going a bit sour. You okay. know, it wasn't really beef, but things there were certain disagreements. Because he was actually Common's like exclusive music producer. Right. Common didn't want to work with nobody except No ID. Right. And there were some situations, issues um, that led them to part ways where Common now became this guy, this big, big guy. And, you know, No ID just went back to Chicago like, yo, just chill, you know. And obviously, uh, Common went out and, and made albums like uh like water for chocolate right mm. so thank you no id thank you <laughs> if you had stayed uh, uh commons main producer, producer i don't know if we would have gotten albums like like water for chocolate i don't mm. know if we would have found ourselves admiring dilla the the way we do mm -hmm. because of his relationship with common I don't know a lot of this hip hop stuff would have like really become something I don't know. I don't know, but thank you. Thank you cuz I don't have to find out. Right, but that's that's life though. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And I said this to you the other day when we were just talking off air and um I always quote it because it's so true on Beyonce's documentary and I think his life is but a dream. Mm. She says when you're making the biggest decisions of your life, there's no trumpets that go off and say, this is, is the big biggest decision. decision or Absolutely. this is a big decision. But you realize it after the fact. So for whatever reasons he might have had at the time for not wanting to do that, it ended up having such a beautiful ripple effect yeah. on our culture. Absolutely. Which brings me to the song. Right. So uh, the homie, no ID, was like, okay, so Common is like doing all these these things. And like, yo, I need to get back at this mm -hmm. music thing. Mm -hmm. And obviously, because of, you know, the, the success that they had with Common's album, he had built certain relationships in the, in the industry. Mm -hmm. So he went to Jermaine Dupri. And so, so, yep, so, so deaf. Deaf, he was like, yo, dude, I'm trying to work. Mm -hmm. JD was like, yo, so what are we doing? He's like, yo, whatever you Don't want us to lie. do. That's not what JD, he says, y'all know what this is. Y'all know what this is. <laughs> you know how he is. So, so yeah, they, 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 you know, they built this, uh, this dope relationship. And yo, before you know it, he's on this Bow Wow joint and he did several other songs under the So So Deaf label. So, um, that was destiny you know mm -hmm. i mean we have this classic song because of you know the, this small rift that happened but obviously um these are childhood friends and they were able to sort their differences out and i think man like what they've achieved is is incredible both as a as a duo and 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 as individuals um another thing that i really want to speak about is quoting him right okay there's something, like yeah quotables. there's something that he said that i will never ever 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 forget right 
No ID says it's important to not only be talented, but you also have to be credible. Okay? Whew. Okay? It's yeah. important to not only be talented, but you also have to be credible. And he said that, right? He probably said it in passing, but right. I was like, well, we will we'll pause that. What? Right. And it was him explaining how he got Jermaine Dupree to, you know, to, to mess with him. Right. Um, he's from Chicago. JD's in uh, Atlanta, yeah. you know. So there's a lot of things that can come into play to, to not make that relationship happen. But because he had the talent, but more importantly, he was credible. His work spoke for himself. Right. He was one of those people that knew that, okay, cool, I can go to this guy and say, yo, I have something to offer. Yes. And JD can believe him. Right. You know, so to all the producers out there, it's so important for, for us to get to a place where we can be credible, where our work can speak for itself. Right. Take a look at people like Anati. Yes. Anati doesn't have to explain himself when he gets into a studio. Right. When an artist approaches him, he doesn't have to. It's like, yo, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're that guy. You know yeah, what I, I mean? I know. I, know, I right. know. Because his work consistently speaks for himself. So, I like that. So it's good. We always, we always talk about branding. We mm -hmm. always talk about, yo, B this million dollar producer and whatever whatever but if you're not credible mm -hmm. forget about that so on that i like this kind of chat and i like this kind of talk right and i think that you know obviously you're speaking to and about production and producers but it does not end there no. so this is always my chat you're gonna kill the bit so this is always my chat because i think that a lot of really incredibly talented people sometimes because they are so naturally gifted, mm. they don't always feel the need to hone yeah. as far as craft. And that I hear a lot, especially in my realm, yeah. in radio as well. Yeah. And I think that any creative, anything that you do that is creative, you have to put in those 10,000 hours. And that's why even you will say, producers, make a beat every day, do something yeah. every day. And that's why we were even speaking about the, the Stogie T verse a day thing, how right, it right, is right. so incredibly important. And I think with that also comes attitude, yeah. right? Because if you fall back on, no, but I'm naturally great. Um, good. You know, God gave me a gift. God did give you a gift, but you've got to work. Yeah. You know, and your attitude is also the thing that comes into play. Work ethic. Your work speaking for you is not just about the product itself. Yeah. It's about how you move as well. And I think that's where credibility comes from as well. Yeah. Because as I always say, or as the saying goes, is that your reputation is going to get there before you do. Yeah, and absolutely. that is incredibly important. So don't fall back on just your talent. You have to keep honing it because you can't, 10 years down the line be like i'm just i'm just rocking this natural talent you have to evolve and grow as well yeah. and attitude 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 is going to be the thing that makes you go i'm going to work at it because i want to be better tomorrow than i was today absolutely and it's incredibly incredibly important so i just wanted to get on my soapbox <laughs> and just put that out there because it is important because also it makes it difficult for people to work with you yeah. as well yeah you know and i've always said People are more likely to work with a less talented. naturally talented or yeah. skilled person if the attitude is right, yeah. if the work ethic is right, if you are teachable, if you are open, and if you don't get to a point where you're like, well, I'm Aziza, so nobody can then come tell me anything about this radio and production stuff because yeah. I know what I'm doing. No doubt, no doubt. And we must also remember that being talented is a very scarce thing mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that because i like radio now i'm talented for radio right. no, no 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 doesn't mean if i'm a producer then i'm yo this is a talented producer no, no 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 i've in my experience i have learned that in order to be credible mm -hmm. you have to be disciplined Yes. And you have to you have to understand that even if you're not talented at it, you have to give it hundred percent and you just might find yourself ahead of those who are talented. You know what I mean? And ever since I knew that, ever since I, I realized that, I actually see it all over the place. 
there are a lot of people who are doing well right in in their respective passions but they they're not like when you get to actually speak speak to them you mm. realize that no they're just hard workers right and they're dedicated they're dedicated to whatever they're doing you know and for me that was that was crazy for me i was like okay cool so that means that if i work hard enough you know and i have the passion for this thing i don't have to necessarily be talented right. in order to you know to to thrive in it there's so many people i can mention who who you know who have done incredibly well and they'll tell you that like ah, you know, in terms of talent not so much All but right, so let me, let me let me make it easy for you i'm one of those people just to wrap it up before we go and play uh, Nas with daughters really yeah, yeah, yeah let me tell you why okay. i say that naturally as um a speaker mm. my voice naturally is not your typical oh my god she's radio yeah yeah there are people who you hear and where they just speak you're like oh my god you should work in radio you've got the voice for yeah it. i had to work at it i had to work at training the voice for the mic right right in right. order for it to be appealing talk i can talk anybody can talk yeah. and that's the chat that i'm always having radio is not just talking it's about how you talk how yeah. you approach it how you're using your voice the inflections and those kinds of things so naturally speaking i'm not your typical if you had to put me up next to a um i don't know i'm not gonna drop names but mm. there are people that you would put me next to and you'd go oh i pick her over me just because of the natural voice yeah it just comes in there it just like it comes just in naturally but even if it's just a normal speaking voice my normal speaking voice yo <laughs> it's kind of high no there. i feel you i feel you i feel you and you're absolutely right that's and that is what i see as a you know a good fundamental uh you know principle to have you know you don't like yeah a lot of people have a, a problem with like being I mean in this system that we're in you know a lot of the things that we're doing uh, this radio thing the mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. you always come across uh, certain red tape mm -hmm. that's gonna bar you from doing certain things so no matter how hard you work you know sometimes if you don't ha know this person or if you have like I don't know like you don't want to do certain things right. then you you run the risk of not having a place of where you want to be um you know whether you're talented whether you work hard I understand those things but I think it's important as a standard okay just as a standard to be a hard worker you know I have this conversation with with my kids uh okay not my biological kids Who you child <laughs> i was about to go yo you gotta clarify <laughs> yeah no with with my pe let me let me say that like i usually have I, 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 I have these conversations um with a lot of people right. and i tell them that you've already lost yeah if you're not a hard worker like you you you're not in the race anymore you know yes there's red tape yes there's all this industry bs that's out there yep but if you're not naturally a hard worker, you've already lost. You're not you're not even going to compete. That's true. So that's where it starts with me and that's where I believe that this guy comes from. But more importantly, I need you to remember that quote cuz that quote is incredible. It is more important to be like it's it's what does he say? It's, it's important. It's important to not only be talented but to be credible. All right, so we're going to hold it there. We're going to play you Nas with Daughters, and then we're going to come back and wrap it up. It's 22 minutes after 7 o'clock. It is the producer's spotlight right here on The Element. Mr. Instro, the pristine queen, every Wednesday, half past 6 to half past 7. Tonight, we're taking a look at No ID, and here is another great one. We are The Element. 26 mm. minutes after 7 o'clock, myself and Mr. Instro. It is the producer's spotlight. Four minutes to go until we wrap it up. We're taking a look at No ID this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my favorite songs are played this evening as well so i'm super super excited that guy is amazing man absolutely no incredible ID is 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 amazing he actually understands a lot of what it means to make timeless music right a lot of the stuff that we've listened to today like we can listen to at any time 
It's know? like that bow wow joint. It's yeah. 2021. Yeah. Do you always slap? Do you always? I mean, yes. the, the reality is different, but the sound. Yes. When you're listening to the sound, you're like, yo, this it's undeniable. It's an undeniable song, you know? So, shout out to No ID, um, which also brings me to the point that I was making in the previous link um, is that, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily have to. Um, you don't have to be a, a, a like a talented person or like a one of one kind of thing to to make a real a real impact um, and that is to say no ID eventually became the president of good music mm -hmm. he was sort of like strong armed into it by Kanye West like nah man like I need you to be mm -hmm. the guy and his success story for me is is incredible because that's when they signed Big Sean. Mm -hmm. And Big Sean, for me, was like, okay, what is this good music? You know, I'd, I'd, like I'd always been a Kanye West fan. And obviously, I, it was like, okay, cool, you're a producer. I mean, it's only a matter of time until uh, you, you want to sign some acts and you want to make this, you want to branch out from Rockefeller. Cool. But, yo, man, choosing no idea was, no ID was genius because when you find an artist like Big Sean, yep. you make a mark, bruh. Yep. You know? And this guy was so hungry. Big Sean was so hungry that like we felt it. You know, we felt it, we felt in the way that he came out. Right. That yo, he was gunning for everything. And 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 it's almost similar to a a a J. Cole, you know, that you know when you heard you, J. Cole for the first time in his early days, you were like, you, 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 this guy's gonna go far, man. Friday night N light. There you go. I don't need to say more. It's all. I don't need to I say more. I ever about wanna that. say when people are like, oh, J. Cole, I'm like, yo, <laughs> Friday yeah. night light. Yeah. Can you wanna go, Phil? Can you wanna Forest Hills hungry. Drive? Can you wanna go, Phil? He was hungry, 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 hungry. And um, it, I think the stars were aligned, man, because that that sort of like really pushed No ID's mm -hmm. resume. You know, he wasn't just now a producer; he was now not just the DJ. He was now an executive. Yeah. You know, he was running a label and a credible one at that. A, cr a crazy, crazy credible uh, um, a label, and I find that like sometimes, man you always find yourself in certain places in life and if you don't open up yourself to those opportunities you might find yourself losing out on making real impact mm. this guy was not <laughs> this guy was not it was not in his plans to become this administrative guy right but you know when he tried it out it became a great success you know he went to several other labels uh after good music you know and he started a career as a record executive right you know and that's one thing that i've always wanted to branch out into you know what to, yeah Yo, what I'm I, saying. I have always wanted to be an a and r because as a producer you sort of like know what to what to listen out for you know how to how to sort of like hear a person's voice and want to design it within the music to make a certain sound like you can hear those things right and man it was just so interesting but obviously you have to deal with the administrative side as well which i'm not very good at you know like you really i don't know like i i, I don't know but like i put my money on you i would no i really really would oh uh, well you know Still? Well, yeah, like so, 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 so. What, what? I mean, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you just gotta be open, you know. Sometimes a lot of things. I mean, I'm doing this radio thing, and it was not in the plans. And I love it. You know, it was not in the plans at. If you were to ask me in 2015 if I'd ever be on radio, I'd right. be like, hell no. Like, <laughs> I'm in the stool. You know what I mean? That's, what you talking about? Yeah, that's my comfortable place. <laughs> so, um, I admire the fact that he was. Um, you know, he was comfortable enough to make the decision to move 
into into you know a more executive position yeah and that has opened more doors for him you know in terms of being a vice president at uh capital music mm -hmm. you know being an and a very pivotal uh anr you know with rock nation you know being affiliated with those people yeah. being friends with with jay-z you know being being in those positions where yeah. he can he can say yo let's make 444 yo you know those kinds kinds of influential positions you know and that all comes from an opportunity that he was like well if you know let's let's give it a shot let's why see. not yeah so shout out to no id he's one of my heroes and i really want to say that um don't ever limit yourself put yourself in as many positions where you are not sure but if it's in your if it's in your spirit and if you have some passion for it go for it man go for it and that's where we wrap up the producer spotlight yeah. for this evening myself mr instro thank you so much for coming through i sure. love it when you are here having looked at no id this evening the pod is going to be dropping soon and the video and all that and all that and all that so we're going to wrap it up with big sean kendrick lamar and jay electronica the joint is called control nobody absolutely nobody must tell me a big sean can rap <laughs> <laughs>